Parables about motivation. Elephants. One day, passing by elephants in the zoo, I suddenly stopped, surprised that such huge creatures as elephants were kept in the zoo tied with a thin rope to their front leg. No chains, no cage. It was obvious that elephants could easily free themselves from the rope they were tied with. But for some reason, they don't. I approached the trainer and asked him, why such majestic and beautiful animals just stand there and do not make an attempt to free themselves? He replied, When they were young and much smaller than they are now, we tied them with the same rope, and now that they are adults, the same rope is enough to hold them. Growing up, they believe that this rope will be able to hold them and they don't try to escape. It was amazing. These animals could get rid of their shackles at any moment. But because they believed that they could not, they stood there forever, not trying to free themselves. Like these elephants, how many of us believe that we won't be able to do anything? Just because it didn't work out once? The Master's Sword once upon a time, in a far, far country near the Blue Mountains, there lived a young man who really wanted to become a master of the sword. And according to the customs of that land, only the one who had a real sword of the master could become a real sword master. The young man really wanted to become a master, and he went to the cities of a distant country near the Blue Mountains. He wanted to come to one of the old sword masters and ask him, Great master, the fame of your exploits goes all over the country. You've fought in all the big battles. You have always won, earned fame and honor. But now you live in peace, you have everything you want. And you no longer need your sword, the sword of the master. Sell it to me, or give it to me. The young man really hoped that one of the old masters would respond to his request, and he set off and walked for a long time, heading towards one of the big cities where, as he knew, the elderly sword master lived. He walked for a long time and entered the gate. He asked everyone for directions, and everyone readily showed him the house where this man lived. A great master of the sword, retired. And the young man came to his house and addressed him, Great Master. The fame of your exploits goes all over the country. You've fought in all the big battles. You have always won, earned fame and honor. But now you live in peace, you have everything. And you no longer need your sword, the sword of the master. Give it to me, or sell it. The swordmaster listened to the young man, smiled and answered him. I would love to, but you know, this sword will not suit you. The young man bowed to the master and set off again. He climbed mountains, descended into valleys, he sailed along rivers, crossed them and went on. He came to another city, found the house of an old swordmaster. He entered this house and addressed the master, great master. The fame of your exploits goes all over the country. You've fought in all the big battles. You have always won and earned fame and honor. You are a real master, everyone knows that. But now you live in peace, you have everything, and you no longer need your sword, the sword of the master. Sell it to me, or give it to me. And the old sword master listened to the young man, smiled at him and replied, I would love to, but you know, this sword won't suit you. And again the young man who really wanted to become a real master of the sword set off on his way. 
he went further and further, found the old masters and addressed them with the same request, Great Master. The fame of your exploits goes all over the country. You've fought in all the big battles. You have always won and earned fame and honor. And now, great master, you live in peace, you have everything you can only dream of. And you no longer need your sword, the real sword of the master. Sell it to me, or give it to me. And time after time, after listening to the young man, the old wise master smiled and answered the same thing. I would give it, but you know, this sword will not suit you. And then the young man decided to go to the mountains, in search of secret blacksmiths. He walked for days and nights. I got up with the sunrise, went to bed when the sun had long since set. He slept little and walked and walked far into the mountains. And finally he found secret blacksmiths far away in the Blue Mountains and told about his situation. He asked me to forge him a sword that would seem like a real sword of the master. The blacksmiths listened to him and answered. You want to become a master, and you need a sword. Good. And they forged him a sword that also sparkled with noble steel. Easily cut through iron, silk or hair was perfectly balanced, covered with intricate coinage and looked like a real master's sword. The young man accepted his new sword with joy and gratitude, bowed to the secret blacksmiths and set off on his way. He fought in many battles and won. His fame spread further and further across a distant country, outstripped his appearance, delighted friends, instilled respect in the hearts of opponents. He lived a rich, decent life and one day finally retired, settled in a city in a distant country and lived peacefully and happily for many years. And only sometimes, when the guests praised him, a true master of the sword, he felt uncomfortable. After all, he knew that he never had a real master sword. And one day an unknown young man came to him. He bowed and said, Great master, the fame of your exploits goes all over the country. You've fought in all the big battles. You have always won and earned fame and honor. You are a real master, everyone knows that. And now you live in peace, you have everything, and you no longer need your sword the sword of the master. Sell it to me, or give it to me. The old master smiled at the young man with an incomprehensible smile and replied, I would love to, but you know, this sword will not suit you. The boy and the starfish. A man was walking along the shore and suddenly saw a boy picking something up from the sand and throwing it into the sea. The man came closer and saw that the boy was picking up starfish from the sand. They surrounded him from all sides. It seemed that there were millions of starfish on the sand. The coast was literally dotted with them for many kilometers. Why are you throwing these starfish into the water? The man asked, coming closer. If they stay on shore until tomorrow morning. When the tide goes out, they will die, the boy replied, without stopping his occupation. But this is just stupid. The man shouted. Look around. There are millions of starfish here. The coast is just littered with them. Your attempts won't change anything. The boy picked up the next starfish, thought for a moment, threw it into the sea and said, No, my attempts will change a lot. For this star. Then the man also picked up the star and threw it into the sea. Then another one. By nightfall, there were a lot of people on the beach, each of whom picked up and threw a star into the sea. 
and when the sun rose, there was not a single unsaved soul left on the beach.